Hey guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is an update to my Survival 10 kit. There's a lot of good things in here that have updated and changed around just for this kit specifically, so I thought I'd go over those with you guys today. Stand by. All right, so with our Survival 10 kit, it is not meant to be a standalone kit, although it should be able to act like a standalone kit. This kit is meant to supplement other survival items that we have on us or as part of our kit. This gives us extra options and other different items that we can use for a variety of purposes. So we should have some sort of fixed blade knife on our hip that we can use for large tasks. We can also carry even a multi-tool. This is just the Leatherman Surge a large multi-tool with large tools on it, giving us a lot of different things. We even have pocket carry items, a hank of paracord, a lighter, start fires, and then even a utility knife, just a small blade that we can use for everyday tasks. It's like my old ranger instructor used to say, have a knife, way to start fire, and a snack in your pocket. And then if we can get away with it, we should probably have some sort of canteen and cup set, or even just a canteen cup or a metal bottle. Treat water over a fire to make it safe to drink. And then that enclosed container so we can transport water over distance. And then paracord, lots and lots of paracord, or any cordage will do. I made the poor decision of getting foliage green when I meant to choose OD green for my paracord. So now I have a thousand feet of this crappy ACU color paracord sitting around. But it's paracord and it's cordage and it works fine. So we're going to use that in a lot of upcoming videos. So these things are just basic kit items. We all know this. We all know these kit items. We're gonna see these kit items inside of our survival tin. Again, this is meant to supplement these items and in my opinion, replace some of these items if we lose them. We wanna have good containers and good cordage, but if we lose these things, we have ways to manufacture those items again from natural material or from items inside of our survival tin kit. All right, so let's take a look at our tin. Now, the first thing on the tin is gonna be a rubber band around the outside. This is a larger rubber band, and you can see we have ranger bands holding the tin together, plus the tape to keep it waterproof and help hold it together. This thing is packed to the gills with gear, so if we drop this, we don't have the bands on it or the tape, this thing could bust open and we lose all the contents. But a rubber band, at least a good one like this, not a crappy one, has a lot of uses. A little while ago, I put out a poll on YouTube about crappy survival equipment that comes in small tin kits like this or commercial kits and the rubber band was one of the five options and it was voted most junkish or most crap or worthless piece of kit. The rubber band, at least a good one like this, gets a bad rap for survival. There's a lot of different things we can do with a rubber band. I've actually got a couple of demos right here we can show you. Now the first one, most obvious one, is probably just making some sort of slingshot with that rubber band. Here we have that rubber band cut in half and tied together. We can make just a simple slingshot. I would much prefer that we just create a basic simple rat trap, something like this, with that rubber band acting as an engine. It's similar in concept to something like this. This is a bamboo rat trap, and the bamboo itself, this section right here that's shaved down very, very thin, acts as the engine for the entire trap. We just fit the trigger stick in like that. We have a noose that goes in the center right here, and then you can see the little pin inside is the trigger for the actual trap itself, and so the animal goes in there and hits that pin. It traps the animal, and it's stuck, and holds the animal in place, killing it. But we can do the same thing using the rubber band as an engine. All we have to do is pull this down. We have our trigger stick. It's gonna stick in place. It's just this shield right here. And then we have the paracord right here. That went fast. Inside, it acts like the noose, similar to our other rat trap that we had. It's the same thing, but we're just applying a little bit of ingenuity using that rubber band now as the engine to catch small game. In this case, rats or squirrels or mice. And then now the animal comes through, hits the shield, and gets caught in the noose right here, holding it in place and killing it, and come back and check our trap later. We can also use it as a flame extender. Just light it on fire, and it'll burn for a long time. And then even with a rubber band, we kind of have to think outside the box. This is a mock-up of a fish trap that the goal is to actually recreate this whole thing from natural materials, just using some tools out in the wild in a future video. But we can use that rubber band as an engine or a simple trap mechanism like this. We push the boat out into water and let it float and get as far away as we can. And then to get it out even further, all we do is we have a line attached to our trigger stick. We pull that trigger stick 
and the engine flaps pushing the boat further out into deeper water so we can attempt to go after fish that may be out there just thinking outside the box so there's four uses for a rubber band you know right off the bat now we've got ranger bands on top and then we've got our green tape we went with green this time to be festive happy st patty's day to everybody and we could use this tape for a variety of things and you'll see the tin popped open because it's packed with a lot of different survival materials and different things and updated kit items. So let's just open it up. All right, so first thing we got 100 mile an hour tape, duct tape, and then we've got foil. We can use to actually make a container that is viable enough to go into fire to boil water and make that water safe to drink. All right, let me move this out of the way really quick and show you how we can take this tin foil and make it into a cup. Now, the important thing is we need tin foil. We need a sheet that is twice as long as it is wide. We're gonna get down here to the end. What we're gonna do is make one fold. We're gonna take this corner down to this edge. Doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but as even as possible. Now pull out more, and then from here, just like we're folding the flag, we just fold this straight over, keeping this edge on top of our standing edge. And then from here, we're gonna cut it right here something like that now we can unfold it we have a piece of foil or aluminum foil here that is twice as long as it is wide and that's what we're going for that's our first step all right now from here what we do is we just fold it over once like that and then we have this line right here where we fold it at the first time to get the proper dimensions all we're going to do flip it over fold on that and now we've got our triangle the top right here where we have most of the folds it's going to be the top of our cup or the opening and so with our two corners here what we're going to do is fold one one side approximately in the middle like that and fold it flat and take the other corner and do the same thing mirroring up with this line that we've now created at the top of our fold and it's going to look something like that i'm just going to put one down flip it over fold this back and then now we just find the crease split apart and we can take this open it up and now we have a cup that will hold water that we can place in a fire to treat that water and make it safe to drink And so that's the primary purpose for having tin foil as part of our tin kit is that we can make a cup, place it in the fire, and treat that water a time or two or three to make it safe to drink and stay hydrated. We got a little flashlight so we can see in the dark. Too easy. A commando wire saw. Now this is just a cheap model and chose to keep the rings. In my last video, I demonstrated how we can use these rings, even a ring like this or a grenade pin ring, key ring, whatever, to create a trigger for a large game deadfall trap and so chose to keep these rings on this saw plus they work well for handles you can put toggles through these to get a better grip and saw and take down material next we've got some snare wire this is just trip wire from a ground sensor or early alert system take this wire 24 gauge to enhance our wire sets that arrowhead we could use as another cutting tool. We could also use it as an arrowhead if we remake a bow and arrow out of the wild. We could even use it as a spear tip. Then we could even use it with traps like a spin trap or a deadfall to increase the lethality with that spear tip coming down and stabbing the animal, killing it. A lot of uses for an arrowhead besides just using it as an arrowhead. We then got aviator spark light. Shoot those sparks. And on top of that, we got rid of matches. In my older versions, I had matches in here as fire lighting tools. Decided to get rid of those and opted for a lot more tinder. So we have six tinders right there, two different types. These are more just cotton, although they're infused with Vaseline a little bit. And then we have these coglins that are basically more Vaseline than they are cotton material great fire starters both of these but then a lot more to get a fire going quick fast and in a hurry especially in inclement weather to go along with our fire kit we have two birthday candles and those birthday candles are meant to act as flame extenders so we get our tinder lit or improvised tinder or if we need to transfer flame from one fire to another or keep that flame going for longer periods of time we have the ability to do that with these two small candles now one thing i've added to this kit to enhance with our snare wire here are actual snares and these are just basic snares there's five of them made from 1 32nd actual cable wire to create five ready-made snares that we can attach and set out but these five ready-made snares all right so here's the cable wire i've been using there is this type of wire up on my amazon store if you guys want to take a look at it just to shop around but it's actual cable wire 
stainless steel, similar to larger cable wire that are used for large game animal traps, coyote traps, all sorts of things like that. But they come with cable ends, aluminum, just these guys you can put around the cable, hammer into place and flatten out. And then went ahead and picked up number six, washers, just small ones like this, that we can use as an actual point of attachment with a nail and created just this basic snare. And so we have one point of the wire that has a cable tie on it that acts as a stopper. This is the end of the snare. We have the snare loop itself and then the washer that we can use as a swivel. And we can also use this in a toggle attachment. And I'll show you that here in a second. This washer gives us the ability to attach our cable onto just about anything, either using a nail to go through the washer or we can use it in a toggle fashion where we take this, put the washer closer to the actual snare, make a bite in the wire because it's highly flexible and then push that through the eye of our washer and simply put our spring pole through that loop we created with our bite going through that washer and then now all we have to do is tighten this down. We just tighten down the cable now on our trigger stick. As far as we go, we still have the ability to adjust the snare in and out. Then we can just take the excess and wrap it up and around to get it out of the way to keep it from coming undone, something like that, although it's kind of a mess. And now we can set this out, adjust our snare where we want, and we have ready-made snares that we can attach either with a nail or with a toggle fashion like a spring pole, something like this along with snare wire, give us the ability to put out traps and go after a game almost immediately while still having the ability to create more traps and more snares to go after game. Next, just the simple button cuff key that we can use for escape, sew this into our clothing. Then got, it's just a small folding knife we can use for a variety of purposes. We got a nail, that nail can be used with our snare, we can put it through that washer and nail the snare down, or we can use this to enhance traps, again, similarly to how we would enhance traps with our arrowhead. We got a whistle, signal rescue. Down here we have our second cutting tool. This is just a Leatherman squirt. So we have two cutting tools now. We have a folding knife, just a small one, and then even a folding knife with our Leatherman squirt. But this gives us the pliers, which is important for processing our wire or other material. And then it gives us extra hands so we can pull something out of the fire if we need to, or possibly get something out of our skin, like a hook if we got it stuck. A lot of good uses for a multi-tool, very beneficial for survival. And then this even has the added benefit of having scissors, that we can use for hygiene, like cutting our hair, cutting our nails, as well as a simple file that we can use to sharpen tips of nails or other metal objects to enhance lethality of traps, if that's what we're using them for. A lot of good uses in a reliable, sturdy multi-tool like this. Another container is a 32 ounce or one quart water bag. This is a whirl pack bag. So on top of having aluminum foil, we have this water pack bag combined with actual water tablets to treat that water chemically and make it safe to drink. We got some camo band-aids. Opted to make our first aid kit smaller in this tin and go for more tools and things. We can take these camo band-aids, put them on cuts and things like we have on our fingertips. And we can also use that duct tape at the beginning for bandages as well. Type one paracord, approximately 100 pounds of tensile strength, one inner strand. You can use it for a variety of purposes. Next, a button compass. Looks like it's pointing north. Good. And we've got a small sew kit. You guys have probably seen these tape sachets before. Just got a razor. Another cutting tool wrapped with thread. We've got safety pins, needles, and pre-made thread, plus a couple extra needles in there for gear repair. And we can just close that up, tape adheres to itself, and now we have just a very small, compact sew kit that goes right in our tin. We did the same thing with our fishing kit. Razor wrapped with line and tape for safety, plus we have sinkers and hooks, and maybe a couple of swivels in there. That line is already ready to go with the sinker and hook attached, so we can just take it out and actually start fishing. We close it up, very small, compact fishing kit. Another camo band-aid. We got a Fresnel lens that we can use not only to see things that might be on our skin that we can't see with our eye, but also solar ignition, fire starter, and just a sterile razor that we can use for a lot of different purposes. And we've got alcohol prep pads. Primary use for these is just cleaning and disinfecting wounds. We can also use these as emergency fire starters since they're alcohol based. We can use those with our spark light or we could use with our small ferrule rod. That's just a small ferrule rod taken off the top of a magnesium bar. We can use any striker 
to get a fire going using that. One thing I've added to my kits that I see a lot of guys using nowadays is a bobber chem light. This goes on a fishing bobber so you can see it at nighttime if you're fishing out in the dark. But this also makes a good light source if we have to use it and keep low light or see the things that are inside of our kit or if the battery runs out on our flashlight. We can use this as a backup or an alternate. Then after that, a signaling mirror, so we can signal search and rescue. We can also use this as a hygiene product, see things that we normally couldn't see on our bodies. And then the last thing besides the tin itself is just messages or codes in sticker form. These came with one of the tin kits I bought a long time ago, and I just hung on to it because I thought it was a good piece of kit. And so we have emergency rescue signaling codes to use with panels or markers or natural debris to form different letters and shapes to communicate with search and rescue aircraft. And then on the back, we have Morse code. So if we needed to communicate over squelch or with certain bangs or whistle blasts, we can communicate and actually communicate letters and spell out words and sentences to communicate with search and rescue as well. And of course, everybody knows or should know the POW tap code. If you've been to Sears, you can use that too. And then we have the tin itself as our final item. All right, so here's the kit completely laid out. I hope it gave you guys some ideas about things you can add to your kit. If you carry a small tin kit like this, I think they're viable options for survival, especially if you know how to use these things and prep them ahead of time. At least some of this stuff, the fire and trapping kits, small tools, and even water collection and signaling devices, they may not be the best in the world, but they still give you an opportunity to signal for rescue, to craft things off the landscape, to help you survive. And that's the whole point of a kit like this. Again, it complements our larger tool items and other things that we may have with us. So I hope you like this video, a very down and dirty video today. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, maybe a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate you guys' feedback. I want to thank you guys for what you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.